Hello, makers! This week we're celebrating the color green and the desert tortoise. We'll also be making a desert tortoise toy. We'll be particularly looking at Gophorus agasazii. That's right, we're talking about you. What does the desert tortoise look like? Where can this desert tortoise be found? The desert tortoise spends much of its life underground, staying out of the heat. What does the desert tortoise eat? What natural dangers do they face in their habitat? What is some of the unnatural danger that they now face? What can we do to help the desert tortoise? An effective action we can take to help the desert tortoise is to help reduce the unnaturally large raven population to more sustainable levels. For us, this means being careful about not leaving food waste around and being careful to throw away your trash and other things like that that ravens might like to feed from. It also helps to make sure that local businesses are careful about closing their dumpsters. And if we really want to help the desert tortoise, we have to be brave enough to talk about the issues. In the kit for your craft, you'll find a walnut shell, little green rocks, a pencil and pin for dotting, a paintbrush, and some paints. You will need for yourself some kind of glue that you feel comfortable working with. I kind of recommend hot glue. Firstly, like many of the things we paint here at the Creation Station, don't be afraid to make this your own. I'll share with you the methods and styles I used on this tortoise, but don't be afraid to color your tortoise your favorite color, or maybe add racing stripes to help it move faster? I don't know. For my tortoise, I coated the shell in a base color of black. Nextly, I took some green paint, and applied a heavy dry brush of the color. Dry brushing is a technique which results in paint being applied to the more exposed, raised geometries of the object you're painting, leaving the lower depressions in the object unpainted. I'm going pretty heavy with this dry brushing. There will only be a few low places where the black will show through. Remember to let your paint dry a bit between your layers. Next, I'll grab the pencil with the pin in its eraser. We can use the head of this pin to apply dots of paint on the shell. We do this by dipping the head of the pin in some paint and just dotting away. It may help to wipe your pin clean every once in a while. Here I've done all of my orange dots.
And next I'll do some white dots. And I finished it up with some purple, which didn't show up that clearly against the green, but, you know, it was still fun. Now that the shell is painted, we can begin the process of gluing the feet on. So go ahead and get your glue ready. Your kit should have five rocks in it, which will let you have four feet and a head. It may help you to lay out all your rocks in your tortoise shell to get a feel for where you want them before you decide to glue them all in. On screen now you can see that I've already started and have a few feet glued in. I'm using hot glue, which works pretty well. We've also used E6000 glue with success. You may be able to use PVA glue like Elmer's glue, but if you do you should find a way to hold everything in place for the longer drying time. If you do use hot glue, be sure to get a parent or guardian to help you if you need. The hot glue will cool pretty fast, so you need to be sure to add the feet quickly. I kind of add a blob and then stick the rock in to get some surface contact and then put the rock where I want, dragging the glue with it. There we are, all finished. Looks good to me. I hope yours looks good to you as well. And I hope that you enjoyed doing this craft and that you have a wonderful day.